Welcome back, esteemed viewers, to another enthralling lecture at the Knowledge of Self Academy. Today's class delves into the intricate labyrinth of the mind, where shadows of indoctrination silently mold our decisions. Brace yourselves for an intellectual journey filled with advanced academic vocabulary words and terminology that will unravel the mysteries of our emotional landscape. If you relish the challenge of thrilling content paired with complex vocabulary, this presentation, titled Pavlov's Echo, How Automatic Responses Shape Our Emotional Landscape, is tailored for you. Within the shadowy corridors of indoctrination, subtle influences move like specters, shaping our decisions beneath conscious awareness. For a more comprehensive version of today's lecture, we highly recommend checking out Lecture 6 titled Exploring the Power of Mental Bondage, Unveiling Its Influence with Pavlov G12-1104-23. There, you'll find an in-depth exploration of the captivating concepts we'll touch upon today. Today's presentation delves into the eerie echoes of repetition, strategically influencing our actions, thoughts, and emotions, a malevolent force akin to how Pavlov's dogs learned to react to a bell. The media, a dark sorcerer, nurtures unrealistic aspirations through repetitive messaging, casting a bewitching spell on our desires. Subtle biases ingrained in indoctrination cast shadows across education, urging us to challenge existing beliefs in a dance with the unknown. A collective effort to embrace character development and communal cooperation becomes a pact with unseen forces forged in the fires of transformation. Escaping mental subjugation demands a daring pursuit, a cultivation of self-awareness achieved through introspection, meditation, and identification with your higher self. It's a ritualistic dance with the shadows, gradually loosening the grip of detrimental emotional responses a battle fought in the eerie silence of our inner sanctum. Cultivating self-awareness becomes a lantern in the abyss, emphasizing the importance of nurturing inner tranquility. Join us in this macabre odyssey as we advocate for the pursuit of authentic contentment over haunting echoes of indoctrinated desires. Let the chilling winds that echo through the haunted corridors of our souls guide you toward a more genuine and fulfilling existence. Enjoy the presentation, and may the shadows of knowledge unfold before you. Welcome back, esteemed viewers, to another enthralling lecture at the Knowledge of Self Academy. In the shadows of my earlier discourse, I delved into the pervasive paradigm that clings to the collective consciousness like a sinister spectre. This chilling worldview, meticulously woven by an exclusive cadre fueled by motives of supremacy and avarice, unfolds as a calculated endeavor to perpetuate cognitive dominance among the unsuspecting multitude. This paradigm, shrouded in darkness, is no mere accident, rather, it emerges as the sinister offspring of a purposive and strategic doctrine meticulously architected to govern the cognitive landscape of individuals. The orchestrations of this elite faction, veiled in secrecy, craftily circumscribe individuals within the confines of a prescribed reality, deftly molding the contours of their thought processes, leaving them ensnared in a web of orchestrated illusions. Scrutinizing the mechanisms reminiscent of Pavlovian conditioning, we unfurl the intricacies through which this doctrine insidiously permeates diverse facets of human existence. Whether in the haunting realms of entertainment, the eerie corridors of education, the shadowy alleys of economics, the foreboding landscapes of health, the laborious mazes, the twisted laws, the dark politics, the enigmatic religions, 
the forbidden realms of sex, or the war-torn territories, the tendrils of this doctrine deftly shape the tapestry of our consciousness, a tapestry woven with threads of control, manipulation, and indoctrination. The expedition to unravel the labyrinthine nature of mental subjugation commences with intellectual comprehension, establishing the bedrock of understanding in the face of an unseen adversary. Nevertheless, mental subjugation, a malevolent spectre born of indoctrination processes, manifests as a nuanced phenomenon that transcends mere cognitive apprehension. Delving deeper into the convoluted machinery of mental enslavement demands the cultivation of heightened emotional acuity, a journey into the uncharted territories of our own psyche. Automatic emotional responses, triggered by encounters with specific stimuli, be they individuals, events, situations, or material objects, give rise to emotions like anger, disgust, fear, bias, or antipathy, each emotion a ghostly echo of our susceptibility to influences perpetuating mental subjugation. These spontaneous reactions lay bare our vulnerability, the haunting evidence of invisible puppet strings manipulated by unseen puppeteers. To attain a comprehensive grasp of mental subjugation, a dual-pronged approach becomes imperative. Firstly, the development of intellectual awareness is requisite to comprehend the theoretical underpinnings and foundational tenets, the unlocking of secrets hidden in the dark recesses of indoctrination. Secondly, the refinement of emotional intelligence is indispensable to discern, dissect, and gain insight into our automatic emotional responses when confronted with stimuli that challenge our cognitive equilibrium. By embracing the multifaceted nature of this convoluted phenomenon, we arm ourselves with the requisite instruments to navigate and dissect the intricate dynamics of mental subjugation sagaciously. This comprehensive approach empowers us to discern and confront deleterious automatic emotional reactions, thereby augmenting our capacity to liberate ourselves from mental subjugation. Indoctrination, a procedural imbuing of individuals with specific beliefs sans critical scrutiny, transpires predominantly in our formative years, a period when our neural architecture is nascent. These are the eerie epochs when indoctrination, akin to a malevolent force, exerts its influence, leaving indelible imprints on the pliable canvas of our impressionable minds. In these formative epochs, when indoctrination exerts its influence, our cognitive faculties are markedly susceptible to external forces. The neural synapses undergo a dark shaping, subtly dictating our apprehension of reality, a reality cloaked in the shadows of indoctrination, a reality we must unveil and confront to reclaim the sovereignty of our minds. In the clandestine recesses of our neural matrix, convictions and ideologies, sown in the shadows of indoctrination, take root and intertwine like the ominous vines of an ancient curse. These primal inculcations act not merely as passive imprints but as active sieves or prisms, distorting and filtering reality through the sinister lens of a doctrinal indoctrination, shaping the very fabric of our cognition. Picture the neural network as a labyrinth, an intricate maze within our cerebral realm, where indoctrination, a malevolent force, deploys diverse methodologies to sculpt our consciousness. Repetition, emotive appeals, and the invisible coercion of societal forces become the tools of this dark art, molding our convictions and weaving a tapestry of influence that spans the vast expanse of our cognitive processes. Within the state of indoctrination, automatic emotional responses crystallize, forming a specter of reactions to specific stimuli, a haunting dance orchestrated by influential establishments such as the media, educational apparatus, 
and governmental entities. These entities, like unseen puppeteers, perpetuate a hegemonic worldview, ingraining societal tenets through relentless repetition. Familial structures, educational systems, media outlets, religious institutions, and governmental bodies, all unwittingly contribute to the perpetuation of this dark spell, a societal norm that tightens its grip with each passing generation. Psychological factors, like the unseen whispers of a malevolent entity, sway the evaluation of human behavior, drawing comparisons to a hegemonic template. The recognition of this influence, akin to an awakening, underscores the pervasive impact of psychological factors on our appraisals and judgments. Yet, in the shadows, a considerable number of psychologists remain oblivious to their dependence on this hegemonic underpinning, a revelation that sends shivers through the corridors of academia. This hegemonic worldview, a ghostly specter, transcends individual behavior, seeping into the very foundations of morality, philosophy, history, education, religion, economics, psychology, linguistics, law, and well-being. Passed down from one generation to the next, it fortifies its grip, a dark inheritance that shapes the destiny of unsuspecting minds. The indoctrination, a malevolent sorcerer, leaves its mark on emotions, invoking fear or anger responses even in seemingly innocuous scenarios. Information challenging our convictions becomes a catalyst for these emotional responses, clouding our thoughts in a tempest of fear, anger, disgust, and anxiety, hindering the clarity of our thinking. To emancipate ourselves from this cognitive bondage, a journey into the depths of understanding indoctrination's origins, objectives, and its insidious influence on our automatic emotional responses becomes imperative. Cultivating self-awareness emerges as a beacon in this transformative process, guiding us through the shadowy realms of our own psyche. Awareness of our instinctive emotional responses becomes a compass, guiding us through the haunted moments where specific stimuli provoke adverse emotions. This heightened awareness, a flickering light in the darkness, finds utility in meditative practices, dissipating these emotions and laying bare how indoctrination sculpts our emotional responses. Yet, this transcendence from indoctrination, like a horror series, unfolds as a gradual evolution. Inceptive endeavors, such as introspection, meditation, and aligning oneself with the higher self, encounter resistance, an unseen force pushing back against the light. Persevering through this resistance becomes pivotal, a courageous act of breaking free from the cognitive shackles of indoctrination and embracing a life in consonance with one's higher self, even amidst the daily crucibles. The adeptness to sustain inner tranquility and bliss, a forbidden knowledge hidden in the arcane texts, possesses the potential to systematically metamorphose one's conduct and alleviate the emotional grasp indoctrination once wielded. Diverse methodologies, like the cryptic rituals of an ancient grimoire, aid in acquiring this proficiency, yet identifying with the higher self emerges as the ultimate panacea, a key to unlocking the chains that bind us to the shadows of indoctrination. As previously elucidated, the inaugural stride towards cognitive liberation entails an intellectual assimilation of the doctrine ensnaring us in mental subjugation, a journey that echoes through the corridors of the unknown, beckoning the daring to unveil the secrets hidden in the recesses of the mind. In the dim corridors of intellectual exploration, structuralism emerges, born from introspective inquiry casting light on the hidden frameworks that underpin societal structures, language, and the intricacies of the human psyche. Opposing this, 
Pavlov's classical conditioning, a specter of mechanized responses, delineates the eerie mechanics by which a neutral stimulus entwined with an unconditioned stimulus births a conditioned response. As we tread the murky waters of indoctrination, structuralism becomes the seeker, discerning the latent messages and values sown by societal constructs. Meanwhile, Pavlov's classical conditioning reveals the insidious process through which these messages weave their way into the very fabric of our subconscious, like creeping shadows in the night. Yet, beware the limitations of relying solely on analytical ratiocination to free oneself from the clutches of cognitive bondage. The analytical intellect, a creation of the very structures we yearn to transcend, demands a leap beyond analytical cogitation for authentic liberation. A leap into the unknown, forging a connection with the higher self, the facet cognizant of our thoughts and emotions, a guide through the haunted maze of the mind. The journey into self-awareness begins with introspection, a voyage into the depths where insights into stimuli, precursors to unwarranted emotional reactions, are amassed. Emotions, a spectral gamut ranging from anger and frustration to rejection, hatred, disgust, and bias, lurk in the shadows, waiting to be unveiled. To dispel these undesired emotional apparitions, revelations from introspection are seamlessly woven into the fabric of our meditation regimen. Here, the higher self assumes a pivotal role, an ethereal guide leading us through the labyrinth of our own minds. In the realm of meditation, the focus shifts to the breath, a rhythmic dance between inhalation and elongated exhalation. Executed with a depth precision, this practice unfurls a path toward a trance-like state, a state where the lines between reality and the supernatural blur. A potent technique emerges, a key to unlock the connection with the higher self. An acknowledgement of existence, stripped of analytical dissection, becomes the gateway. Whether proceeding or following the breathing ritual, this practice finds rationale in the awareness of one's thoughts and feelings, a communion with the unknown. The efficacy of communion with the higher self reaches its zenith in a state of profound relaxation. Here, acknowledging one's existence while disentangling from the intricacies of thoughts and emotions becomes a journey into the mystical realms of the mind. Daily meditation, a ritualistic seance, gradually dissipates the emotional apparitions, freeing the mind from the chains of cognitive bondage. The higher self, an elusive manifestation of our genuine essence, rises above the ego and conditioned cognition. Alignment with this ethereal guide grants us the power to observe thoughts and emotions from a distance, bestowing upon us the discretion to disregard unwanted emotional facets. Choosing to overlook these undesired emotional responses becomes a ritual, a seance of liberation, where the spectres of conditioned emotions gradually fade into the unknown. The higher self stands as a testament to our perpetual connection with the divine, a guide through the dark corners of the psyche. The concepts unraveled in these dimly lit passages will find further elucidation in subsequent lectures. The course's primary objective is to beckon you into the shadows of these abstractions, establishing the foundational groundwork for your comprehension. In this realm, our manifestations predominantly arise from automatic emotional responses, a dance with the shadows choreographed by our adaptation to an environment etched into the recesses of our minds. The indoctrination agenda, a puppet master in the shadows, delineates this external milieu, programming us to react automatically in predetermined manners. Indoctrination extends its spectral influence to ten distinct spheres of activity, 
ensuring our automatic responses align with the agenda of mental subjugation. Its pervasive nature envelops us, leaving us inescapably bound by its effects. Entertainment, an enigmatic force adept at eliciting our emotions, emerges as the siren in the night among the spheres manipulated by the meticulously orchestrated doctrine of control. Its influence, like tendrils of mist, seeps deeply, captivating our very essence. While immersed in its embrace, we often deceive ourselves into believing we can distinguish reality from illusion, yet this illusion merely facilitates the assimilation of the producer's intended worldview. Ultimately, entertainment wields a profound sway over our beliefs and perspectives. It subtly molds our perception of reality, and we, unwittingly, may embrace the ideas or values it presents. This underscores the imperative of recognizing the potential impact that entertainment exerts on our worldview and critical thinking, as we navigate the dimly lit corridors of the unknown. In the ominous shadows cast by the lens of Pavlov's classical conditioning, a chilling revelation emerges, unraveling the clandestine influence of entertainment on the very fabric of our behavior, a prelude to a sinister doctrine infiltrating the recesses of our consciousness. As we delve into Pavlov's canine experiment, the evidence surfaces, exposing the insidious threads of mental enslavement woven into the very tapestry of individual minds. Pavlov's classical conditioning, a methodical dance of stimuli and responses, unveils the shackles of indoctrination constricting the spectrum of our emotional expression, a malevolent force curbing our ascent to self-actualization and self-transcendence. To break free from these unseen bonds, to unlock the dormant potential within, demands a harrowing journey a profound awareness of the conditioning that has puppeteered our thoughts and actions. Aligning with the virtues of our higher self becomes our weapon, a conscious rebellion against the limitations imposed. In subsequent lessons, the attributes of this ethereal guide will be laid bare, guiding us through the labyrinth of personal growth. A chilling reiteration resounds, echoing through the corridors of comprehension, the prevailing worldview, embraced by the masses, is a meticulously crafted doctrine, a web of deception designed to perpetuate mental subjugation. Its tendrils slither insidiously across the domains of education, economics, health, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Remembering these foundational truths becomes our compass, guiding us through the murky concepts that await elucidation in the looming lectures. Eminent voices, resonating through mediums vast and varied, have borne witness to the deleterious impact of these domains on humanity. Videos, lectures, books, and documentaries stand as a testament to the pervasive influence of the doctrine of mental subjugation. The evidence, a trove of analyses, negates the need for further elaboration on this haunting subject. At the heart of the enigma lies a question, one that pierces through the fog of inefficiencies and unfavorable outcomes. Are these flaws inherent in the genesis and evolution of these domains, or are they the deliberate aftermath of a conscious neglect of our true nature as the higher self? This neglect, a malevolent force compelling us to succumb to the darker recesses of our emotional impulses. In the shadows of our existence, the concept of the higher self remains shrouded in obscurity since time immemorial. A worldview, etched during our formative years, becomes our reality. The absence of awareness and connection with our higher self fosters a restricted perspective, where gratifying our lower emotional inclinations appears to be the only recourse. The analytical lens, focused solely on unraveling indoctrination's exploitation of institutions, 
casts doubt upon the prospect of restoring them to impartial, therapeutic states. A chilling skepticism lingers, whispering in the corridors of our doubts. Awakening to the potency of entertainment as a tool in the orchestrated doctrine of subordination is a haunting revelation, a dance with shadows that molds our consciousness. Rooted in an agenda of subjugation, a biased worldview, an emotional imbalance, entertainment becomes a puppeteer in the grand theater of our minds. Failure to acknowledge its corrupting effects, etched in the canvas of personal introspection, leaves us stranded in toxic communities. The same ominous truth shrouds the remaining spheres of activity. It is crucial to recognize that what I deem emotionally imbalanced may appear as an arduous demand to many. The oblivious masses remain ignorant of mental enslavement underlying various mental issues, dismissing unfavorable emotional responses as inconsequential. Mental disorders arising from birth defects and injuries stand exempt, their origins untouched by the sinister hand of indoctrination. In the murky depths of knowledge, some tread a path laden with videos, books, lectures, and scholarly pursuits, delving into the profound truths concealed within the sinister shadows of various human activities. However, let it be known that this class is no mere conduit for the regurgitation of acquired knowledge. Its purpose is far more sinister, seeking not just the acknowledgement but the shattering of the emotional constraints that bind. These chains, veiled in the guise of mundane existence, not only obstruct the path to self-actualization but also cast a malevolent shadow over the journey towards self-transcendence. Prepare to unravel the cryptic meanings concealed within the following terms. Self-actualization, a term birthed in the twisted corridors of the mind of psychologist Abraham Maslow. It signifies a sinister process, the realization of one's full potential, metamorphosing into the darkest version of oneself. It encompasses a treacherous journey through personal growth, self-awareness, and the pursuit of unique talents, passions, and aspirations, all while dancing on the edge of an abyss. Self-transcendence, this term, shrouded in mystery, beckons the daring to venture beyond the boundaries of the individual self. It whispers of connections with something greater, a force lurking in the shadows. It involves a perilous dance with purpose, meaning, and connections to others or a higher power. Acts of altruism, spirituality, or dedication to a cause larger than oneself are the stepping stones into the abyss. Initiating the descent into mental liberation, introspection emerges as the first unholy stride, peeling back the layers where automatic responses fester like malevolent spirits. This heightened awareness becomes a weapon, a tool for retracing the genesis of emotional imbalance, a journey leading to the heart of the pernicious doctrine that has ensnared us since our vulnerable formative years. With this newfound self-awareness as a dagger, the journey spirals into the abyss of Pavlov's classical conditioning. It goes beyond the sterile intellectual understanding of indoctrination, dissecting the very threads woven into the fabric of our consciousness. The tapestry of conditioning unravels, revealing the puppeteers that have danced in the shadows of our minds. In the echoes of preceding discourses, the crafty design of entertainment unfolds, a diabolical symphony tailored to foster mental enslavement. These seductive forms of expression address issues with a cunning artistry that obscures our boundless potential, all the while injecting the venom of mental subjugation into the very marrow of our consciousness. Yet, in the shadows, there exist non-vocalized art forms, such as jazz and instrumental music, untouched by explicit behavior patterns. 
Building upon the unholy lessons, the evolution of mental enslavement is laid bare, a consequence of a meticulously orchestrated indoctrination system, a chilling necessity born from the impracticality of physical captivity. Fortuitously, two psychological instruments emerge from the abyss, structuralism, wielding introspection as its foundational dagger, and Pavlov's classical conditioning, an eldritch revelation of how we become conditioned to operate within the confines of predefined parameters. To offer a glimpse into the origins, a brief plunge into the murky waters of Wilhelm Wundt is warranted. This German psychologist, a harbinger of structuralism, formalized the use of introspection in psychology. A methodical exploration of conscious experiences unfolded, employing trained observers or subjects to reflect on and report their thoughts, feelings, and sensations during the treacherous dance of mental activities. Wundt's work delved into the very essence of consciousness, perception, memory, reaction, and emotion, all twisted components in the grand tapestry of the human psyche. Classical conditioning, on the other hand, reveals a process where our bodies, mere vessels in the macabre dance of stimuli, react automatically, much like Pavlov's dog salivating at the ominous sound of a bell, a chilling association with impending darkness. This kind of conditioning, a silent whisper in the corridors of our minds, unfolds without our conscious awareness, leaving us mere puppets in the theatre of our own existence. From the shadows of our environment emerge a symphony of automatic responses, ranging from the overt to the imperceptible. The world teems with myriad situations, events, individuals, and material objects, each a puppeteer pulling the strings of our emotions. These instinctive reactions, like tendrils woven into our very being, are the offspring of what I, along with many others, designate as indoctrination, an insidious facet of the overarching system that shackles our minds. At the precipice of understanding, one might be tempted to attribute inappropriate reactions to mere ignorance, a veil that shrouds the eyes of the unwittingly ensnared. Yet, in the twisted dance of mental enslavement, even the unaware bear the weight of responsibility for their deeds. The indoctrination system, like a puppet master manipulating its marionettes, evades culpability, leaving a system of reward and punishment in its wake, a deceptive illusion of justice in a society ensnared by unseen chains. While the labyrinth of analytical debates may beckon, the revelation that our actions are marionettes dancing to instructions embedded in the recesses of our formative years offers a beacon of understanding. Whether we stand aware or oblivious to the carefully crafted program that obscures the connection between consciousness and the higher self, the consequences of our actions rest squarely upon our shoulders. In the shadows, Dissenting voices may argue that, amidst the prevailing negativity, success stories sprout like fragile flowers from the soil of social institutions. Indeed, there must be tales of triumph, else, the fragile veneer of motivation to sustain the existing system would crumble. In this twisted dance, society feigns alignment with loftier ideals, creating a mirage of success to perpetuate the grand illusion. Acknowledging the deficiencies in the ten domains, education, economics, entertainment, health, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, under the sway of indoctrination is but the first step. Our life experiences are shaped by the evolving stages of our consciousness, a relentless force that molds our existence whether we are conscious of it or not. The forthcoming materials will be the cryptic keys to unlock these foundational concepts before delving into the labyrinth of more intricate information. The doctrine of mental subjugation, 
an unseen force woven into the fabric of our existence since our entry into this world, demands meticulous examination. Its pervasive impact on the ten areas of activity is the haunting melody that reverberates through our lives. Armed with these insights, we embark on the treacherous path toward emancipation, seeking genuine freedom in a world ensnared by the shackles of indoctrination. As we peer into the annals of history, the shadows cast by individuals from diverse racial backgrounds, driven by avarice and the pursuit of power, unfold tales of inhumanity. Yet, the lectures to come will reveal that each atrocity was a manifestation of our collective consciousness evolving through the ages. Regardless of race or gender, the capacity to tap into our higher selves lies dormant within us all, waiting to be awakened by the exercises advocated. Our journey through the labyrinth of indoctrination unveils its dual facets, success and failure. The optimists, ignorant of the teachings expounded here, find contentment within the limited perspectives indoctrination bestows upon them. Their gains remain confined within these narrow walls. In stark contrast, those who cultivate inner joy amid the pursuit of attainable goals, guided by ethical principles, find satisfaction even before their objectives materialize. Embracing the present moment as the most precious possession, they flourish within the confines of mental constraints. Armed with tools like meditation, positive affirmations, and an optimistic outlook, they face challenges with serene peace and joy, defying the shackles that seek to bind them. In the shadows of conventional success lurks a dark cohort, a significant number grappling with diagnosed mental disorders. Can we not perceive the ominous spectre of these conditions, shrouding the path to a harmonious quality of life? The prevalence of undiagnosed individuals concealing mental disorders is an enigma, a labyrinth where disorder-specific intricacies, scrutinized populations, and the elusive methodologies employed with a tapestry of uncertainty. Whispers suggest that for every diagnosed case, a legion of two to twenty undiagnosed entities skulk in the shadows. Enter the cryptic revelations of a 2019 tome in the journal, Jama Psychiatry, unveiling a haunting truth, for each soul diagnosed with the spectre of major depressive disorder, MDD, a spectral 4.8 remain undiagnosed. The shadows deepen, revealing a more profound prevalence among the disenfranchised, women, young souls, and the diverse tapestry of racial backgrounds. A separate 2020 ritual in the journal PLOS Medicine unravels another layer of this enigma. For every individual ensnared by the shadows of schizophrenia, 2.6 undiagnosed apparitions haunt the collective psyche. The whispers intensify, echoing among the marginalized, those colored by hues society deems outside the norm. In the labyrinth of the mind, indoctrination, a silent puppeteer, manipulates strings through the media, driving individuals to acts that merely satiate desires. Contemplate the siren song of the media, especially the malevolent allure of music videos. Explicit scenes dance before susceptible eyes, a seductive ballet that ensnares impressionable minds. Rappers, draped in opulence, establish a sinister nexus between wealth and the allure of multiple partners, a tapestry woven with dangerous threads. These videos, like classical conditioning's haunting echoes, echo Pavlov's dogs. In this macabre dance, neutral stimuli become linked to unconditioned responses, forging associations between material wealth and sexual allure. The shadows cast not only by media but also within our social spheres. Pleasure-inducing hormones, triggered by explicit content, 
we've a spell of desire for opulence and wealth. Yet, amidst this hedonistic symphony, it is crucial to grasp that wealth, in itself, is not inherently amiss. The shadows dissipate, revealing a path where education untangles external opulence from the metrics of success or happiness. In a realm where institutions falter, the power lies within our grasp to reshape our mindset and, consequently, our consciousness. The journey, though daunting, beckons us to unravel its mysteries, an odyssey we shall embark upon later. Consider the labyrinth of choices that entangle our existence. Does not Pavlov's classical conditioning theory unravel the enigmatic threads binding our decisions to acquired automatic emotional responses? The intricate dance between this conditioning, where we learn to respond reflexively to life's events, binds us inexorably to the indoctrination process. Embarking upon life's odyssey, we confront a cacophony of stimuli that elicit a kaleidoscope of emotions. These emotional tendrils, intricately woven with internalized ideas and values, serve as a formidable facet of our indoctrination. They, in turn, weave a spell over our decision-making, our reactions to the external tapestry, and our overall perception of the world, ensnaring us in patterns dictated by the teachings bestowed upon us. Picture it akin to Pavlov's dogs, slaves to the involuntary salivation at the mere echo of a bell. Likewise, we find ourselves ensnared, unable to escape specific emotions or forge diverse responses due to the indoctrination's indelible mark. On the societal stage, conspicuous automatic reactions, birthed from learned behavior, frequently manifest in the ethereal realms of religion, politics, and social issues. On an intimate scale, beyond reflexes to material entities and life circumstances, we also display reactions to personal attributes, complexion, origin, weight, gender, height, shaped by the intricate web of our indoctrinated responses. These automatic reactions form an intricate tapestry, intricately interwoven with our indoctrination. Much like Pavlov's dogs, blind to the distinction between the bell and food, we stand powerless against the emotions or reactions stemming from our assimilated beliefs. Thus, our emotional responses don the garb of a filter, tinting our perception and interactions with the world. This emotional conditioning, an echo of the indoctrination's whispered teachings, transpires surreptitiously, weaving its tendrils during the indoctrination ritual. If, in the theatre of indoctrination, success is scripted to echo through the halls of wealth, our automatic reactions will mirror this script in situations where affluence intertwines with triumph. This learned script possesses the power to awaken the desire to chase riches fervently in the pursuit of triumph. Drawing a cryptic parallel between classical conditioning and indoctrination grants us the key to unravel the origins of our automatic reactions. The architects of our reality, shadows in the labyrinth, have meticulously crafted the environment that envelopes us. The emotions, puppeteers of our automatic responses, burgeon through the repetitive dance with specific experiences, especially those cloaked in the shadows of our formative years. While the prospect of altering our beliefs and preferences flutters on the horizon, the foundational emotional patterns anchoring our automatic reactions are etched with indelible ink onto the parchment of our consciousness. Their metamorphosis through mere thought presents a formidable challenge, unfolding slowly over the dim corridors of time. In our quest for liberation from the indoctrination's grip, a formidable foe emerges, the unconscious nature of these automatic responses, shadows lurking in the corners of our awareness. 
their inherent obscurity renders them elusive, slipping through the grasp of discernment, let alone transformation. Despite our valiant efforts to engage in critical thinking and reassess our beliefs, the sway of our emotions remains a formidable tempest. These emotions, meticulously cultivated through the passage of our lives, exert an insidious influence over our capacity to think and reason. As we strive to scrutinize and question our deeply entrenched beliefs, our emotions imbue this examination with their hues, weaving an illusion of control and objectivity more profound than reality permits. This veils the extent to which our thoughts and perspectives dance to the conditioned rhythms of our emotions. To achieve emancipation from mental subjugation, our habitual automatic responses must navigate the mental landscape, untouched by the storms of emotion. This does not imply immunity from situations that momentarily disrupt our emotional equilibrium, such as the poignant loss of a family member. As previously unraveled, the concept of frequency embodies a state of mind etched through repetition or frequent exposure. Harmonizing with predetermined or indoctrinated beliefs significantly shapes the frequency at which we traverse our mental landscape, a cadence echoing the unseen orchestrations of our indoctrinated minds. In the shadowy corridors of our minds, we often overlook the ominous sway our emotions hold over us. These emotions, elusive entities operating on distinct frequencies, bear the scars of years steeped in conditioning. These frequencies, etched by the relentless chiseling of experiences, cast their spell upon our perception of the world, dictating our responses to the kaleidoscope of circumstances, and warping our interpretation of reality. While conscious thought flits around the periphery, attempting to break free, it's imperative to grasp the chilling reality that these deeply ingrained emotional frequencies, the architects of our automatic reactions, cloak themselves in resistance to change. Embarking on the treacherous journey toward liberation from the indoctrination's grip demands the lantern of self-awareness, a quality honed in the crucible of introspection. This cultivated self-awareness metamorphoses into a potent weapon during the arcane rituals of meditation. Amidst the ethereal realms of meditation, the quest is to unearth the observer within, the higher self, a spectral entity that beholds thoughts and emotions without succumbing to their insidious embrace. Through the mystic art of being, devoid of the shackles of intellectual justification, we forge a connection with this higher self. In this transcendental dance, we gradually dissolve the tendrils of our emotions, learning the art of detachment through this newfound communion. The labyrinth of emotional equilibrium unravels itself through the vigilant guardianship of our emotional well-being. We, the sentinels of our own minds, must navigate the labyrinth of our daily lives, attuned to the subtle echoes of emotional discord. These discordant notes, resonating with the sinister chords of sadness, anger, hate, and confusion, echo through external events, individuals, or the tangible whispers of material objects. Yet, the haunting symphony doesn't cease there, it extends its tendrils into the shadowy recesses of our thoughts and other internal realms. The tenets of Pavlovian classical conditioning, once grasped, unveil the malevolent alchemy at play, many of these distressing emotional states emerge as the progeny of learned behavior birthed in the crucible of relentless repetition. Consider the persistent associations that weave themselves into the fabric of our minds, black entwined with evil, wealth enshrouded in the deceptive glow of happiness. Such associations sustain the dance of our emotions, forming a web where one concept is ensnared by the other. 
The same sinister dance transpires when we link the melancholy of our favorite sports team's defeat with sadness. This pervasive correlation, dripping through the tapestry of our lives, is a vivid testament to the insidious tendrils of the indoctrination process. To unravel the shadows, we must recognize the triggers, the roots of distressing emotional experiences, acknowledging that sorrow, even in trivial defeats, is a learned response, a puppet manipulated by the hands of repeated associations. Our societal framework, once perceived as random, unravels its intricate design. The deeply ingrained biases, the hegemonic worldview, the emotional susceptibility, all strands in the vast tapestry of our existence, are now exposed as acquired. The puppeteers behind this macabre show reveal themselves, the architects of a meticulously orchestrated indoctrination agenda. Armed with the knowledge of indoctrination's clandestine influence on our automatic responses, we stand at the crossroads, ready for the critical examination and re-evaluation of our beliefs from the vantage point of nuanced awareness, laying the foundation for a gradual metamorphosis within. In the haunting echoes of Pavlov's legacy, humans, akin to Pavlov's dogs, form connections between specific actions, thoughts, and emotions with rewards or consequences, a haunting dance shaped by indoctrination. These associations, like spectral echoes resonating through the corridors of our minds, become automatic, their roots deeply embedded in the soil of our indoctrinated consciousness. Let us revisit the dark tableau of chapter 5 for a deeper plunge into this abyss. Picture students, unwitting participants in a psychological drama, basking in the teacher's praise for their active class participation. Over time, the invisible chains of conditioning bind them, forging an automatic link between speaking up in class and the expectation of positive attention and rewards. This connection becomes an indelible part of their psyche, a puppeteer manipulating their actions in the classroom without the need for conscious thought. In the murky landscape of our formative years, the concept of pleasant emotions linked to praise takes root. The desire to replicate the emotional ecstasy associated with praise, whether through constructive or deleterious means, becomes a potent motivator, a siren's call beckoning us into the labyrinth of actions governed by the puppet's strings of emotions. The emotions tethered to praise morph into symbols, happiness, validation, and pride, mystic keys unlocking hidden chambers in the shadowy fortress of our minds. In the realm of our self-awareness, we find ourselves ensnared by the tendrils of media's portrayal, a tapestry woven with overwhelming emotional expressions and adulation reserved for the exalted figures of fame. Within the intimate circles of family and friends, we've grown accustomed to the rhythmic applause as the silent hymn of approval for various feats. A sinister revelation lurks within the shadows, the pleasurable emotions that course through our veins, accompanied by the intoxicating release of pleasure hormones upon receiving praise, are not whims of fate but outcomes of a clandestine conditioning. Since our nascent interactions with this world, the symphony of praise has become entangled with the orchestration of pleasure hormones. It's a revelation that pierces the veil shrouding our motivations. Many of our actions, ranging from the pursuit of an attractive partner, possession of a luxurious car, adorning ourselves in designer finery, amassing university degrees, to the accumulation of economic wealth, are but marionettes manipulated by the unseen strings of pleasure hormones. These biologically innate responses, once the purview of natural stimuli, have metamorphosed into conditioned echoes, resonating within an emotional framework mold by the repetitive teachings of indoctrination. 
In the cryptic recesses of our psyche, a truth awaits acknowledgement. The dance of emotions triggered by praise is not always a waltz of conscious awareness. Our gaze, habitually turned outward, blinds us to the intricate interplay within. Indoctrination, with its twisted curriculum, obscures the view of our higher selves. While we navigate the external world with finesse, the corridors of self-awareness remain unexplored, the automatic emotional responses to life's tapestry concealed in the shadows. Our higher self, a serene guardian existing in tranquil observation, remains shrouded by the cacophony of external distractions. The key to discerning the subtle shifts in our internal landscape lies in embracing this higher self, a beacon of clarity amidst the chaos. Aligning with our higher self becomes the shield against the inflation of ego fueled by the siren's call of praise. Yet, a grim reality unfolds, a substantial faction dwells in the shadows, unaware of the profound impact praise wields upon their puppet-like behavior. Praise, a strategic instrument in the arsenal of behavior modification, lures the unsuspecting into actions incongruent with their chosen paths. In the absence of self-awareness, individuals may find themselves ensnared in pursuits that disrupt their emotional equilibrium, fervently chasing goals tainted by the lust for acclaim. Transcending the intoxicating emotions tethered to praise becomes the key to emancipation, liberating ourselves from the puppetry of behaviors dictated solely by the allure of material possessions. It's not a condemnation of such pursuits but a call for a balanced perspective, a whispered reminder echoing through the corridors of our consciousness. In the elusive pursuit of our goals, it is the intrinsic essence that should propel our endeavors, transcending the transient dance of emotions. When choices are driven solely by external allure, such as selecting a romantic partner based on fleeting beauty or indulging in a meal for its taste rather than nourishment, a perilous path unfurls. Donning the cloak of opulence through expensive attire, or engaging in hazardous exploits for the sake of recognition, echoes a haunting resonance of seeking approval from the shadows. Our exploration in Chapter 5 unveiled a dark tapestry, woven with the threads of relentless harassment and disrespect, ensnaring those who dared express genuine opinions. A ghastly fate befell them, becoming automatons conditioned to associate self-expression with the ominous specter of negative consequences. Introspection emerges as a beacon in this chilling abyss. Yet, this narrative of desolation is not the universal anthem. Those navigating the labyrinth of mental liberation stand unyielding against the tempest of rejection and bullying, unwavering in their pursuit of truth. In this cryptic realm, revisiting the shards of disrespect can metamorphose into a potent tool during the ritual of meditation. Introspection, our arcane guide, permits us to chronicle the emotional bruises inflicted by insolence. Though the spectre of past emotions may awaken, the power to identify with the higher self, that serene observer within, becomes the elixir that frees us from emotional entanglement. The acknowledgement of awareness brings forth a dormant entity within, conscious of the tempestuous emotions. You hold the key to transcend these turbulent currents, to exist as the unshaken observer, unburdened by relentless scrutiny. As the ritual of introspection becomes a well-practiced incantation, the undesired emotions begin to dissipate, swallowed by the shadows from whence they emerged. The spectral tendrils of past experiences weave a haunting narrative, intertwining actions, thoughts, feelings, and outcomes into an inescapable tapestry. To shun the echoes of unpleasant memories is to leave our reactions unchanged, trapped in the sepulture of unresolved emotions. 
Indoctrination, an intricate system, emerges as the puppeteer, crafting a meticulously curated reality that binds our minds in chains. Our choices dance on strings manipulated by automatic emotional conditioning, dictated by a reality manufactured without our conscious consent. In this obscured chamber of self-deception, our programming blinds us to the true essence of our inner selves. The echoes of Pavlov's dogs reverberate as we cling to our indoctrinated beliefs, even when reason falters or adversity strikes. The shackles of mental bondage are palpable, where emotional responses hold dominion over our actions, eclipsing the realm of rational contemplation. Embarking on an odyssey through the intricate layers of indoctrination, we find ourselves ensnared in its complex web. Choices, preferences, and responses are dictated by the puppet master, and the echoes of Pavlov's bell resonate in our daily existence. Our minds, burdened by the weight of this intricate tapestry, persist in responding to a bell long forgotten, a symbol of our unwitting subservience to a reality we must now untangle and transcend. The shadows retreat, and the echoes fade, leaving us at the precipice of understanding. Thank you. Scholastic Assessment Test or SAT Advanced Vocabulary 2 Echelon Part of Speech, Noun Definition a level or rank in an organization, a profession, or society. Sentence, at a certain echelon of comprehension, one might contemplate ignorance as a plausible rationale for reacting inappropriately to stimuli spawned by the doctrine of mental enslavement. Efficacious. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, effective producing the desired outcome. Sentence, by exclusively adopting an analytical approach to fathom how indoctrination has exploited the aforementioned institutions to implant mental subjugation in our consciousness, we become dubious about the prospect of restoring these institutions to an impartial, therapeutic, and efficacious state. Ego. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Sentence, identifying with our higher self enables us to discern internal changes in any given moment, preventing us from succumbing to the ego inflation brought about by praise. Elaborate. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, involving many careful details thorough and complicated. Sentence, in this elaborate interplay between conditioned reactions and the labyrinth of control. Eliciting. Part of speech, verb. Definition, evoke or draw out, a reaction, answer, or fact, from someone. Sentence, indoctrination exerts a profound impact on emotions, eliciting fear or anger responses even in non-threatening scenarios. Elocution Part of speech, noun Definition, the skill of clear and expressive speech, especially of distinct pronunciation and articulation. Sentence, the concepts elucidated herein will receive further elucidation in subsequent lectures. The primary objective of this course is to familiarize you with these abstractions and establish the foundational groundwork for your elocution. Elucidation Part of speech, noun Definition, explanation or clarification, the act of making something clear. Paragraph, the concepts herein will receive further elucidation in subsequent lectures. The primary objective of this course is to familiarize you with these abstractions and establish the foundational groundwork for your comprehension. Elude. Part of speech, verb. Definition, evade or escape from, 
typically in a clever or cunning way. Sentence, this inherent obscurity makes it arduous to even discern these responses, often eluding our awareness. Emanates. Part of speech, verb. Definition, issues or spreads out from a source. Sentence, an array of automatic responses, ranging from overt to subtle, emanates from our environment. Emancipation. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the fact or process of being set free from legal, social, or political restrictions. Sentence 1. To achieve emancipation from mental subjugation, it is imperative that our habitual automatic responses to perceptions remain as emotionally undisturbed as possible. Paragraph. The expedition to unravel the labyrinthine nature of mental subjugation commences with intellectual comprehension, establishing the bedrock of understanding. Nevertheless, mental subjugation, an offspring of the indoctrination processes, manifests as a nuanced phenomenon that transcends mere cognitive emancipation. Sentence 2. By transcending the emotions intricately linked to praise, we emancipate ourselves from behaviors driven solely by the pursuit of material possessions. Embark. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to begin a course of action. Paragraph, this scrutiny serves the purpose of affirming the all-encompassing nature of mental enslavement in our lives. It equips us with the necessary insights to embark on the path to emancipation from this mental subjugation, leading to the attainment of genuine freedom. Embed. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to fix firmly and deeply in a surrounding mass. Sentence, the convictions and ideologies instilled during indoctrination embed themselves deeply in our neural matrix. Embodied. Part of speech, verb. Definition, be an expression of or give a tangible or visible form to, an idea, quality, or feeling. Sentence, as previously expounded, the concept of a frequency embodies a state of mind ingrained through repetition or frequent exposure. Embrace. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to accept or support willingly and enthusiastically. Sentence, by embracing the multifaceted nature of this convoluted phenomenon, we arm ourselves with the requisite instruments to navigate and dissect the intricate dynamics. Eminent. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, famous and respected within a particular sphere or profession. Sentence, numerous eminent individuals have articulated compelling arguments through varied mediums, videos, lectures, books, documentaries, and more, substantiating my assertion about the deleterious impact of these spheres of activity on humanity, attributing these adverse effects to their entanglement with the doctrine of mental subjugation. Encompassing. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, including or comprising everything. Sentence, contemplate the profound sway wielded by the media encompassing music videos, particularly over susceptible audiences. Endeavor. Part of speech, noun. Definition, an attempt to achieve a goal. Sentence, driven by motives of supremacy and avarice, is a calculated endeavor to perpetuate cognitive dominance among individuals. Engrossing. Part of speech, Adjective. Definition, absorbing all one's attention or interest. Sentence, why is the media so determined to craft engrossing narratives that absorb our attention completely, leaving us captivated and immersed in their stories? Enhanced. 
Part of speech, adjective. Definition, increased or intensified in value, quality, or size. Sentence, let's revisit a scenario from chapter 5 for enhanced understanding. Enigmatic. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. Sentence, the expedition to unravel the labyrinthine nature of mental subjugation commences with intellectual comprehension, establishing the bedrock of understanding in the face of enigmatic constructs. Enslavement. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the state of being a slave, the action of making someone a slave. Sentence, this scrutiny serves the purpose of affirming the all-encompassing nature of mental enslavement in our lives. Entanglement. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a complex or confusing relationship or involvement, sentence, hindered by entanglements, these institutions struggle to reclaim an impartial, therapeutic, and efficacious state. Entangle. Part of speech, verb. Definition, involved with someone in a difficult situation. Sentence, in meditation, the aim is to recognize the part of ourselves that observes thoughts and emotions without becoming entangled in them. We find ourselves entangled in patterns dictated by the teachings we have received. Etch. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to engrave or carve into a surface, to impress deeply. Sentence, while it is conceivable to alter our beliefs, preferences, and choices, the foundational emotional patterns underpinning our automatic reactions are deeply etched into our consciousness, rendering them resistant to transformation through thought alone. Enthralling. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, captivating and holding one's attention completely. Sentence, the enthralling allure of entertainment elucidates its pivotal position among the ten spheres manipulated by the meticulously orchestrated doctrine of control. Entity. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a thing with distinct and independent existence. Sentence, the acknowledgement of emotional instability implies an entity within you conscious of these experiences. Enthusiastic. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, showing intense and eager enjoyment, interest, or approval. Sentence, a claim in our circle signifies enthusiastic approval for various accomplishments. Equilibrium. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a state of physical balance. Sentence 1, refining emotional intelligence is indispensable to maintain cognitive equilibrium. Sentence 2, to achieve emancipation, it's imperative to remain emotionally undisturbed, though disruptions to equilibrium may occur. Essence. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the intrinsic nature or indispensable quality of something. Sentence, our higher self manifests our genuine essence, transcending ego and conditioned cognition. Evolving. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, undergoing continuous development, changing, progressing, or developing over time. Sentence, life experiences are shaped by the evolving stages of our consciousness. Evident. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, plain or obvious, clearly seen or understood. Sentence, our existence in this realm remains evident despite mental subjugation dictating our operations. Exemplified. 
Part of speech verb. Definition, be a typical example of. Sentence, classical conditioning, exemplified by Pavlov, reveals indoctrination's constraints on emotional expression. Exercises. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a task or activity done to develop or test a skill. Sentence, the exercises I've advocated serve as tangible evidence of our capacity to tap into our higher selves. Exigences. Part of speech, noun. Definition, an urgent need or demand. Sentence, persevering through resistance proves pivotal in achieving emancipation amidst daily exigences. Expedition. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a journey or voyage for a specific purpose. Sentence, the expedition to unravel mental subjugation begins with intellectual comprehension. Explicit. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, stated clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. Sentence, non-vocalized art forms like jazz and instrumental music do not prescribe explicit behavior patterns. Expound. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to present and explain a theory or idea systematically and in detail. Sentence, in earlier discourse, I expounded upon the pervasive paradigm in the majority's consciousness. Events. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to reveal the presence of a quality or feeling. Sentence, the voyage into self-awareness commences with introspection, evincing insights into stimuli precipitating emotional reactions. Evoke. Part of speech, verb. Sentence, bring or recall to the conscious mind. Bring a feeling, memory, or image into the mind. Sentence 1. Embarking on the odyssey of life, we confront stimuli that evoke a spectrum of emotions. Sentence 2. Concepts elucidated herein will receive further explication, evoking a profound understanding in subsequent lectures. Facet. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a particular aspect or feature of something. Sentence, these associations, in turn, wield influence over our decision-making processes, our reactions to external stimuli, and our overall perception of the surrounding world, constituting a substantial facet of our indoctrination. Fathom. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to understand or comprehend, a difficult problem or complex situation. Sentence, by exclusively adopting an analytical approach to fathom how indoctrination has exploited the aforementioned institutions to implant mental subjugation in our consciousness, we become dubious about the prospect of restoring these institutions to an impartial, therapeutic, and efficacious state. Fervently. Part of speech, adverb. Definition 1, with great intensity, passionately. Definition 2, with intense feeling or emotion. Sentence 1, this learned response has the potential to awaken our desire to fervently pursue riches in the pursuit of success. Sentence 2. Lack of self-awareness may propel many towards tasks that disrupt their emotional equilibrium, all while fervently pursuing goals fueled by the desire for acclaim. Formative. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, relating to the development of something, especially a person's character. Sentence, indoctrination, a procedural imbuing of individuals with specific beliefs sounds critical scrutiny, transpires predominantly in our formative years. 
Formidable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, inspiring fear or respect through being impressively powerful, intense, or capable. Sentence 1. These emotional patterns evolve gradually over time, presenting a formidable challenge for their elimination. Sentence 2. Despite our conscientious efforts to engage in critical thinking and reassess our beliefs, the sway of our emotions remains formidable. Fortuitously. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, happening by chance or accident, fortunate. Sentence, fortuitously, two psychological instruments at our disposal, as previously expounded, are structuralism, with introspection as its foundational implement, and Pavlov's classical conditioning, elucidating how we become conditioned to operate within predefined parameters. Framework Part of speech, noun Definition, a basic structure underlying a system, concept, or text. Sentence these pleasure hormones operate within an emotional framework shaped by associations with objects, situations, people, and their corresponding internalized values. Fundamental Part of speech, adjective Definition, forming a necessary base or core, central Sentence, the fundamental principles on which something is based Gamut. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the complete range or scope of something. Sentence, these reactions encompass a gamut of emotions, including anger, frustration, rejection, hatred, disgust, bias, and beyond. Genesis. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the origin or mode of formation of something. Sentence, considering that the concept of our higher self and its identification has persistently remained unrecognized and underemphasized since the genesis of our existence in this realm, it is plausible to harbor a worldview solely contingent on the binding doctrines instilled during our formative years. Genuine. Part of speech. Adjective. Definition, truly what something is said to be, authentic. Paragraph, this scrutiny serves the purpose of affirming the all-encompassing nature of mental enslavement in our lives. It equips us with the necessary insights to embark on the path to emancipation from this mental subjugation, leading to the attainment of genuine freedom. Sentence. This creates an illusion of greater control and impartiality than we genuinely possess, veiling the extent to which our thoughts and perspectives are shaped by our conditioned emotions. Grapple Part of speech, verb Definition, to struggle or wrestle with something in a figurative sense, to come to terms or deal with something difficult. Paragraph a significant cohort of individuals attaining conventional success grapples with diagnosed mental disorders. In the context of acute mental disorders, can we not perceive this condition as an impediment to a harmonious quality of life? Gratifying Part of speech, adjective Definition, giving pleasure or satisfaction Sentence, accumulating wealth and possessions directly aligns with cultivating a desirable and gratifying sex life. Happenstance Part of speech, adjective Definition, a circumstance that happens by chance, luck, or accident. Paragraph, in the enchanted realm of happenstance, the ambient energies weave an intricate spell subtly shaping our behaviors like mystical incantations whispered by the unseen forces of our surroundings. Each moment becomes a potion, concocted by the serendipitous brew of environment, 
molding us into characters dancing to the whims of the bewitched stage. Paragraph 2. This paradigm is not a happenstance occurrence, rather, it is the outcome of a purposive and strategic doctrine meticulously architected to govern the cognitive landscape of individuals. Harassment. Part of speech, noun. Definition, persistent, unwanted, and annoying actions, especially directed at an individual. Sentence, in chapter 5, we explored the plight of individuals subject to relentless harassment and disrespect within a specific social group whenever they expressed genuine opinions. Harboring Part of speech, verb Definition asterisk to hold or contain, to shelter or provide a home for. Sentence the prevalence of undiagnosed individuals harboring mental disorders varies based on the specific disorder, the scrutinized population, and the methodologies applied for identifying undiagnosed cases. Harbor Part of speech verb Definition, keep or contain in one's mind. Sentence 1 Considering that the concept of our higher self and its identification has persistently remained unrecognized and underemphasized since the genesis of our existence in this realm, it is plausible to harbor a worldview solely contingent on the binding doctrines instilled during our formative years. Sentence 2 while the preceding paragraph certainly harbors subjects meriting extensive discussion, Realizing that our actions stem from instructions embedded in us during our formative years yields greater benefits than immersing ourselves in an interminable loop of analytical debates and bewilderment. Harmonious Part of speech, adjective Definition, forming a harmonious or consistent whole Sentence, pleasure hormones while biologically innate and typically triggered by natural stimuli like attraction or harmonious melodies, become conditioned responses due to indoctrination. Harmony Part of speech, noun Definition, the quality of forming a harmonious or consistent whole. Sentence, operating in harmony with predetermined or indoctrinated beliefs significantly influences the frequency at which we navigate our mental landscape. Hegemonic Part of speech, adjective Definition 1, relating to, characterized by, or emphasizing the dominance of one social group or class over others. Definition 2. Ruling or dominant in a political or social context. Paragraph. Our societal framework is not arbitrary, rather, it is intricately molded. It is now manifest how our deeply ingrained biases, a hegemonic worldview, and emotional susceptibility to specific stimuli are acquired. Sentence 1. Familial structures educational systems, media outlets, religious institutions, and governmental bodies inadvertently contribute to the perpetuation of this hegemonic worldview, as it attains widespread acceptance as the societal norm. Sentence 2. It is now manifest how our deeply ingrained biases, a hegemonic worldview, and emotional susceptibility to specific stimuli are acquired. Hesitant. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, tentative, unsure, or slow in acting or speaking. Sentence, over time, they've learned to automatically associate speaking their minds with negative social consequences, rendering them hesitant or even fearful of openly sharing their thoughts. Heuristic. Part of speech, Adjective. Definition, enabling a person to discover or learn something for themselves. Sentence, the development of intellectual awareness is requisite to comprehend the theoretical underpinnings and heuristic tenets. 
Hughes. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a color or shade. Sentence 1. As we explore the depths of our emotions, we encounter a spectrum of vibrant hues, each representing a unique facet of our inner world. Sentence 2. Consequently, as we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their hues. Illusory. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, based on illusion, not real. Paragraph, this scrutiny serves the purpose of affirming the all-encompassing nature of mental enslavement in our lives. It equips us with the necessary insights to embark on the path to emancipation from this mental subjugation, leading to the attainment of illusory freedom. Imbue. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to inspire or permeate with a feeling or quality. Paragraph, despite our conscientious efforts to engage in critical thinking and reassess our beliefs, the sway of our emotions remains formidable. The emotional responses meticulously cultivated throughout our lives wield a profound influence over our capacity to think and reason. Consequently, as we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their hues. This creates an illusion of greater control and impartiality than we genuinely possess, veiling the extent to which our thoughts and perspectives are shaped by our conditioned emotions. Imbuing Part of speech, verb Definition, inspiring or permeating with a feeling or quality. Sentence, indoctrination, a procedural imbuing of individuals with specific beliefs sans critical scrutiny, transpires predominantly in our formative years, a period when our neural architecture is nascent. Immerse. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to involve oneself deeply in a particular activity or interest. Sentence 1. She found solace in immersing herself in the intricate world of literature during challenging times. Sentence 2. While the preceding paragraph certainly harbors subjects meriting extensive discussion, realizing that our actions stem from instructions embedded in us during our formative years yields greater benefits than immersing ourselves in an interminable loop of analytical debates and bewilderment. Impartial. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, treating all rivals or disputants equally, fair and just. Sentence 1. This creates an illusion of greater control and impartiality than we genuinely possess, veiling the extent to which our thoughts and perspectives are shaped by our conditioned emotions. Sentence 2. Notably, encountering information that challenges our convictions can act as a catalyst for these emotional responses, impeding lucid and impartial thinking. Impedes, verb delays or prevents someone or something by obstructing them. Sentence, but it is crucial to understand that our programming impedes us from accurately assessing our inner selves. Imperative. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, of vital importance, crucial. Paragraph, to achieve emancipation from mental subjugation, it is imperative that our habitual automatic responses to perceptions remain as emotionally undisturbed as possible. However, this doesn't imply immunity from encountering situations that momentarily disrupt our emotional equilibrium. Sentence 1. It becomes imperative to recognize the potency inherent in indoctrination. Sentence 2. It remains imperative to bear in mind that transcending indoctrination unfolds as a gradual evolution. Sentence 3. To emancipate ourselves from cognitive bondage, 
a comprehensive understanding of indoctrination's origins, objectives, and its influence on our automatic emotional responses becomes imperative. Impetus Part of speech, noun Definition, the force or energy with which a body moves. Sentence, this absence of awareness and connection with our higher self has likely engendered a restricted perspective, where gratifying our lower emotional inclinations appears to be the sole available impetus. Implants Part of speech, noun Definition, a thing implanted in something else, especially a piece of tissue, prosthetic device, or other object implanted in the body. Paragraph, these emotional responses meticulously cultivated throughout our lives wield a profound influence over our capacity to think and reason. Consequently, as we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their hues. This creates an illusion of greater control and objectivity than we genuinely possess, veiling the extent to which our thoughts and perspectives are shaped by our conditioned emotions. The implants of indoctrination are deeply embedded in our consciousness. Implausible Part of speech, adjective Definition, not believable or likely, not plausible Sentence, by the pricking of my thumbs, something plausible this way comes, a brew of fate and fortune, woven in the threads of destiny's loom. Implausibly. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a way that seems unconvincing or unlikely. Sentence, the narrative unfolds implausibly challenging preconceived notions and prompting a re-evaluation of entrenched beliefs. Implications Part of speech, noun Definition, the conclusion that can be drawn from something, although it is not explicitly stated. Sentence, bewitching words weave an intricate spell, their subtle implications casting a mystic influence shaping the very essence of our behavior. Imply Part of speech, verb Definition, to strongly suggest the truth or existence of something not expressly stated. Sentence, the fact that you acknowledge awareness of emotional instability implies an entity within you that's conscious of these emotional experiences. Impracticality Part of speech, noun. Definition, lack of practicality or suitability, unworkableness. Sentence, building upon prior lessons, the evolution of mental enslavement is expounded as a consequence of the meticulously orchestrated indoctrination system, primarily necessitated by the impracticality of physical captivity. Impressionable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, easily influenced or molded. Sentence, many music videos prominently showcase hired models engaging in explicit conduct, a portrayal with the potential to significantly impact impressionable teenagers and young adults. Impulses. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a sudden strong and unreflective urge or desire to act. Paragraph, considering that the concept of our higher self and its identification has persistently remained unrecognized and underemphasized since the genesis of our existence in this realm, it is plausible to harbor a worldview solely contingent on the binding doctrines instilled during our formative years. This absence of awareness and connection with our higher self has likely engendered a restricted perspective, where gratifying our lower emotional impulses appears to be the sole available recourse. Inadvertently. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, without intention, accidentally. Sentence, 
familial structures, educational systems, media outlets, religious institutions, and governmental bodies inadvertently contribute to the perpetuation of this hegemonic worldview, as it attains widespread acceptance as the societal norm. Inception Part of speech, noun Definition 1, the beginning of something, the establishment or starting point. Definition 2, the establishment or starting point of an institution or activity. Sentence 1, considering that the concept of our higher self and its identification has persistently remained unrecognized and underemphasized since the inception of our existence in this realm it is plausible to harbor a worldview solely contingent on the binding doctrines instilled during our formative years. Sentence 2, considering that the concept of our higher self and its identification has persistently remained unrecognized and underemphasized since the inception of our existence in this realm. Sentence 3, at the heart of the matter lies the pivotal question of whether the inefficiencies and unfavorable outcomes entwined with these ten domains of activity stem from inherent human imperfections ingrained in their inception and evolution or if they are the deliberate aftermath of a conscious neglect of our true nature as the higher self. Inceptive Part of speech, adjective Definition marking the beginning of something. Sentence 1, inceptive endeavors, such as introspection, meditation, and aligning oneself with the higher self, may encounter initial resistance. Sentence 2, however, persevering through this resistance proves pivotal in achieving emancipation from the cognitive shackles of indoctrination, fostering a life in consonance with one's higher self, even amidst the daily inceptive stages. Inclination Part of speech, noun Definition, a person's natural tendency or urge to act or feel in a particular way. Sentence, despite his initial hesitation, there was an undeniable inclination to explore the uncharted territories of his own mind. Indispensable Part of speech, adjective. Definition, absolutely necessary. Sentence 1, cultivating self-awareness stands as an indispensable stride in this transformative process. Sentence 2, cultivating self-awareness stands as an indispensable stride in this transformative process. Sentence 3, the refinement of emotional intelligence is indispensable to discern, dissect, and gain insight into our automatic emotional responses when confronted with stimuli that challenge our cognitive equilibrium. Sentence 4. Secondly, the refinement of emotional intelligence is indispensable to discern, dissect, and gain insight into our automatic emotional responses indisputable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, unable to be challenged or denied. Sentence 1, numerous eminent individuals have articulated compelling arguments through varied mediums, videos, lectures, books, documentaries, and more substantiating my assertion about the deleterious impact of these spheres of activity on humanity attributing these adverse effects to their indisputable entanglement with the doctrine of mental subjugation. Sentence 2, while some individuals may find it imperative to delve into a wide array of videos, books, lectures, and other scholarly resources to uncover the indisputable truths regarding the detrimental impact of each of these areas of activity on humanity, it is crucial to emphasize that this class does not intend for the mere regurgitation of such knowledge. Indistinguishable Part of speech, adjective Definition, not able to be identified as different or distinct. Sentence, in the intricate dance of thoughts, 
The enchantment of the mind is woven with threads so fine that the boundary between mental imprisonment and a spell becomes indistinguishable, like whispers of ancient incantations echoing through the corridors of consciousness. Indoctrination Part of speech, noun Definition the process of teaching a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically. Sentence 1, for instance, persistent associations, such as equating black with evil or wealth with happiness, sustain our indoctrination to connect one concept with another. Sentence 2, unveils the manifestation of mental enslavement as a byproduct of indoctrination. Sentence 3, to emancipate ourselves from cognitive bondage, a comprehensive understanding of indoctrination's origins, objectives, and its influence on our automatic emotional responses becomes imperative. Inevitably. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, certain to happen, unavoidable. Sentence 1, our behavior becomes automatic, and while we may contemplate different options, our choices frequently fall within the parameters dictated by our automatic emotional conditioning, inevitably guided by our conditioned responses. Sentence 2. Consequently, as we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their hues. Inevitable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, certain to happen, unavoidable. Sentence, consequently, as we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their hues. Infusion. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the introduction of a new element or quality into something. Sentence, they address issues in manners that obscure our boundless potential while clandestinely infusing the agenda of mental subjugation into our consciousness. Ingrained. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, firmly established or deeply rooted, often applied to habits, beliefs, or attitudes. Sentence 1. This connection becomes so ingrained that they engage in class discussions without conscious thought. Sentence 2. Similarly, we often find ourselves unable to evade specific emotions or respond differently due to the conditioning ingrained through indoctrination. Ingrain. Part of speech, verb. Definition. To firmly fix or establish a habit, belief, or attitude in a person. Sentence Within the spectrum of indoctrination, structuralism discerns the latent messages and values propagated by societal constructs, while Pavlov's classical conditioning explicates the ingraining of these messages into our subconscious. Inherent Part of speech Adjective. Definition, existing in something as a permanent, essential, or characteristic attribute. Sentence, this inherent obscurity makes it arduous to even discern these responses, let alone address and alter them. Initiating. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to cause, a process or action, to begin. Sentence, initiating the journey toward mental liberation, introspection serves as the inaugural stride, unraveling instances where reflexive automatic responses to circumstances, events, individuals, and material entities transpire. Innate. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, inborn, natural. Sentence, pleasure hormones, while biologically innate and typically triggered by natural stimuli like attraction or harmonious melodies, become conditioned responses due to indoctrination. 
inquisitive. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, curious or inquiring. Sentence, while some individuals may be inquisitive about the genesis of their automatic emotional responses, the majority remains unaware of the underlying indoctrination shaping these reactions. Insidiously. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a subtle or gradual manner, with harmful effects. Sentence, by scrutinizing the mechanisms akin to Pavlovian conditioning, we unfurl the intricacies through which this doctrine insidiously permeates diverse facets of human existence. Instigate. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to initiate or provoke, an action or event, by urging, pushing, or stirring up. Sentence, these emotional perturbations can also be instigated by thoughts generated within our minds and other internal factors. Interminable. Part of speech, adjective. Asterisk definition asterisk endless or apparently endless. Sentence, while the preceding paragraph certainly harbors subjects meriting extensive discussion, realizing that our actions stem from instructions embedded in us during our formative years yields greater benefits than immersing ourselves in an interminable loop of analytical debates and bewilderment. Internalized. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, made part of one's thinking through learning or socialization. Sentence, these pleasure hormones operate within an emotional framework shaped by associations with objects, situations, people, and their corresponding internalized values. Interwoven. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, intertwined or entangled, closely connected or blended. Sentence, in more straightforward parlance, Indoctrination sculpts our consciousness, profoundly impacting how we perceive reality by instilling specific doctrines intricately interwoven into our cognitive processes, shaping our worldview. Paragraph, since the dawn of our existence, the threads of influence, like enchanting spells, have interwoven seamlessly through the tapestry of our formative years crafting the intricate pattern of behaviors that now dance in the magical choreography of our daily lives. The cauldron of early experiences brewed a potion, leaving an indelible mark, and our present actions are but the bewitching tapestry woven by the sorcery of upbringing. Intricately. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a very complicated or detailed manner. Sentence 1. Our societal framework is not arbitrary, rather, it is intricately molded. Sentence 2. The subject matter is expansive, and foundational concepts must be grasped before delving into more intricate information. Sentence 3. By transcending the emotions intricately linked to praise, we emancipate ourselves from behaviors driven solely by the pursuit of material possessions. Sentence 4. Consequently, our emotional responses resemble a filter that imparts a tint to our perception and interactions with the world, and this emotional conditioning transpires during the process of indoctrination, where emotions are intricately linked to our indoctrinated responses. Intricacies. Part of speech, noun. Definition, details, especially of an involved or perplexing subject. Sentence, by scrutinizing the mechanisms akin to Pavlovian conditioning, we unfurl the intricacies through which this doctrine insidiously permeates diverse facets of human existence. Intrinsic. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, belonging naturally, essential. Sentence, 
when our pursuit of a goal is propelled by its intrinsic content rather than mere emotions, the rewards reaped tend to serve their intended purpose more effectively. Introspection Part of speech, noun Definition, the examination or observation of one's own mental and emotional processes. Sentence, this is where introspection becomes an invaluable tool. Juncture Part of speech, noun Definition, a particular point in events or time, a critical or significant moment. Sentence, at this juncture, it may not be fully comprehended by many, but the implications of these decisions will shape our collective future. Labyrinth, noun a complicated irregular network of passages or paths, a maze. Sentence, in this elaborate interplay between conditioned reactions and the labyrinth of control. Labyrinthine. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, complicated and confusing, like a labyrinth. Sentence, the expedition to unravel the labyrinthine nature of mental subjugation commences with intellectual comprehension, establishing the bedrock of understanding. Lamentably. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, unfortunately, regrettably. Sentence, lamentably, a considerable number of psychologists remain oblivious to their dependence on this hegemonic underpinning. Lavish. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, characterized by rich or extravagant living, sumptuous. Sentence, unfortunately, such perceptions can breed unrealistic expectations and cravings among those lacking the means to procure such a lavish lifestyle. Liberation Part of speech, noun Definition, the act of setting someone free from imprisonment, slavery, or oppression. Sentence, those on the path to mental liberation are not swayed by rejection and bullying, rather, they remain steadfast in pursuing their objectives. Loftier. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, of a noble or elevated nature. Sentence, as we aspire to loftier goals, we must first dismantle the barriers imposed by indoctrination and reevaluate our understanding of success and fulfillment. Lucid. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, expressed clearly, easy to understand. Sentence 1, notably, encountering information that challenges our convictions can act as a catalyst for these emotional responses, impeding lucid and impartial thinking. Sentence 2, Encountering information that challenges our convictions can act as a catalyst for these emotional responses, impeding lucid and impartial thinking. Sentence 3. As we endeavor to scrutinize and question our deeply ingrained beliefs, our emotions inevitably imbue this examination with their lucid hues. Paragraph. Assessing our emotional equilibrium involves vigilant monitoring of our emotional well-being. Being lucid of our automatic reactions as we navigate our daily lives facilitates the identification of instances of emotional discord. Lucrative Part of speech, adjective Definition, producing a great deal of profit Sentence this can manifest in various aspects of life, such as having an attractive spouse, a luxurious car, designer outfits, university degrees, economic wealth, and more, all seen as lucrative pursuits.